How's it going designers? In today's video I'm going to go over the entire design process of a character flat design illustration featuring a woman. I want to start with the inspiration for today. The inspiration came from one of my previous videos where I actually created a male character using Olga Semclos style and I wanted to follow up on that and actually explore some different ways to actually create these types of illustrations. As you might have noticed I have the exercise files open up. If you want to follow along with this tutorial you can download these exercise files and also the final vector file to actually see the layers the link is in the description of this video to get to the final version of this illustration we're going to go through five steps the first one is we'll create the face then the clothes we'll follow up with the hair the background then add some details to actually give this character a bit of personality we're going to start with the face and the face is actually going to be orange we're moving away from this red because I tend to overuse it a bit. With the pen tool selected, start from the canvas, create anchors like these. Also create something at the top because we'll need to mask that. And then we'll need to create a neck area. Try to have it a bit wider than what you might see in other illustrations. The bottom part is there just because I need some leeway when I'm going to actually mask it with the clothes. I would also like to add some ears. Uh, maybe have them somewhere in the middle of the face and make them pretty large just because I tend to like doing that uh, similar to what I've done before if you don't want to draw it again you can actually select it and go from the panel over here and find the reflect tool place a point somewhere in the middle and while holding down the option or the alt key and shift you're going to make a copy by dragging it on the other side always try to imagine what the character is going to be wearing that's why I'm going to have a sweater place a color at the top to ease the transition between the neck area and the actual clothes with the green selected I'm going to actually switch to the pen tool place a point on the left Left hand side and then drag a curve in the middle and place it at the other side as well repeat that process if something doesn't look right i'll switch to the direct selection tool and actually make some small adjustments right now it looks kind of weird because we have these straight anchors click on them and while holding down shift i'll select all of them and actually round them up just a bit so you can get something like this now we can take the pen tool and continue with the sweater try to not intersect the same line with what you have with the neck because you would like the sweater to go on top so i'm going to start from over here and actually drag and create a shape that's pretty large and then when you're in this situation actually place the anchor below the color and round it up. This is a bit too round right here. I'm going to try to create an actual shoulder and move everything a bit up, make this curve a bit smaller. Now we can move on to the hair and this is a big part for every character. I'm going to start from over here, try to pick this point and actually go in diagonal and start somewhere over here, create a first shape that's going to be the transition from this side to this side. The hair is going to go some like this. It's going to uh, lean a bit in this side. Because I want to do that, I'm actually going to create a curve over here then place a point somewhere around the ear level and actually create a curve have it close over here and then this part is a bit tricky because I'm going to probably go out of bounds a bit I'm going to drag a huge curve because I want to have two sides to it so this is the first hump then you're going to have the second one and close this shape off let's try to send it behind right click arrange send back and now we can see the character we need to actually mask the face so I'm going to start from over here I'm going to try to create a a smooth transition between these elements so this is the first one and then you have the second one which is a bit bigger but again try to have a smoother transition just because I would like for this particular transition to not be visible at all and actually have some kind of rounded flow to it. For the sweater I actually wanted to blend in with the background so I'm going to make the background green. For that I'm going to select a rectangle and create one that's as big as the frame. Right click send it to the back and now you can see that the character is actually blending in a bit with the background. To create some separation between between the character and the actual background I'm going to create a shape that's orange try to follow this curve then try to follow the hairline as well to actually create something that's more dynamic let's send it behind I can tell that this curve is awful and I'm actually going to create a new one I'm going to use that as a reference place the force point and try to minimize the number of curves you're using and this is way smoother as you can see the first one was just test that's how I'm going to call it the test the first one is just a test this one is actually the one we're probably going to use now there's a lot of ten visual tension over here so I need to make some adjustments actually place it here and make this bigger just because the, it was way too close of course there's always the option to actually smooth these pads out so I'm going to pick up the smooth tool from over here, select the shape I want to smooth out and actually go over it a couple of times and that actually creates more pleasing curves. If you want to have more control, double click on it, select what you want to have closer to 
what you currently have or have it more smooth. Now that we got the boring part out of the way, we're actually going to add the details to this illustration. For that, I'm going to use this as reference. In this illustration, I've actually used some stroke outline to define the character. And I'm going to do something like that, but actually use bigger stroke size. We'll start with the face. This is the part where I'm actually going to use black as a color. Maybe not perfect black, but this color should be fine. And try to take the pen tool. And this is the first shape I'm going to have something here at the ears with the selector make sure to switch it up so now you have the actual stroke and increase it somewhere around four points should be good and from the stroke panel make sure to have around the join and around the cap now that you have this style defined you can actually click on it to get the same style switch to the pen tool and actually draw the other curve as well for the eyes, I'm actually going to place them over here at the eye level. So it's going to look very similar to these graphics. I want her to smile. That's why I'm going to have this curve and actually continue this curve up to create some eyelashes. Create a second one just to have symmetry and make small adjustments. For the nose, it's going to actually be pretty basic. Have your first curve over here and then actually try to raise it so you will like her nose to be pointing upwards. When I look at it, I can tell that it's a bit too close to the actual hair. That's why I'm going to pick all of these elements and actually place them down a bit. I really like the way they look, but I'm going to increase the stroke size a bit just to have more contrast in the illustration and actually have the facial features stand out. For the neck, because you have similar type elements that are overlapping, I'm going to use this as an example and actually create very something very similar. Start from the jaw over here. I'm not going to follow along with this one. I'm actually going to offset it a bit just to get a more interesting look. Now we need to create an actual shape that's going to be the shadow. Try to follow along with the neckline. Let's switch the eyedropper tool and actually sample this color and switch it around for the sweater i'm actually going to use some white shapes and start with the color and actually add some <laughs> curves like this let's switch it to white double click on the stroke and make it a white try to curve them just to give the impression of like a 3d element and then i need to close this off to actually see where the uh, shapes overlap but the good part about it is that i can start from anywhere and it doesn't really matter how big the color really is and i'm going to go where you actually intersect with the top color and from there i'm going to continue this line to make some kind of a separation between these elements using this technique you can actually separate multiple colors instead of all of them colliding in the same place i'm going to have an element over here very similar to this one where i wanted to bounce off the the character the interesting part with illustration is that i always think that they look really bad while i'm doing them so when i was doing the shapes i was actually considering to start over just because i was feeling like it didn't look good and this is something that happens with every single illustration i like i feel like i'm a bit too critical i'm curious if you have the same issue where i was thinking about starting over but now that i'm adding the final details i actually feel like it's looking better but if i didn't continue i would have started over again and i wouldn't get to this result so hopefully that helps you in case you feel like the illustration doesn't look as good as you would like it to look just know that i'm going through the same stages as well okay let's add more details i'm going to have uh, one detail over here where you have the hands so you have some kind of separation uh, between the hands and the torso this is a bit too long maybe smaller like this with some sweaters i know that at the elbows you have some kind of uh, different material so i'm going to highlight something like that so i'm going to try to have something like a wavy pad on the other side as well just to have some symmetry but because we don't have anything selected we need to take the eyedropper tool select it because i actually like this illustration right now i'm uh, feeling good about what i'm doing uh, i'm going to take the pencil tool double click on it and actually have it super smooth and create a hard graphic i'm actually using my mouse pad i don't have a mouse so all of the illustration i do on this channel are done on a mouse pad that's why i don't get it perfectly but i like the way this looks switch to the eyedropper tool and actually sample the orange color and try to send it behind <laughs> this is the one again this is the worst heart i ever saw okay i'm going to try to trace it on top of it uh, and smooth it out just make it a bit cleaner just simplify it a bit okay remove the other one okay for the heart usually at the end you have something more straight okay i kind of like this one and let's move it behind that white stroke and see how this looks okay let's recap what we've done so far 
So we started off with the face, we've created the basic shapes and the ears, then we created the color and the sweater shape. We've started defining the hair, first the one that goes behind and then actually have this element that masks the face element. For the background I've actually created this shape to have some kind of separation over here and then you have the rectangle that's the same color as the sweater and in the end I've used these elements to actually define the character and actually give it some detail and some personality to it and I finished off with the heart just because I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more. Thank you for all of the support and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer them. Thank you again for watching, have a great day, take care everybody, bye! Thank you.